Got a mailbag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. start with this big one let's see what we got it says uh, wire wire filter wire filter I leave it in here okay I know what this is Is, uh, so I ordered some wire screening for my reflow oven so that um, there was less contact with the board. I just wanted to see what the different mesh sizes. You can get this kind of screening, stainless steel screening, in um, like 20 different um, grid sizes. I don't remember which one this is. This... Um, not really sure. Let's see what this says. Uh, yeah, so six. Probably six mil because it does say uh, 0610. So it's probably a six mil gr uh, millimeter grid. And these go all the way up to like 20 something and I think there's even a smaller one there's a like fine mesh that goes down to you know like coffee filter size I thought that would be good to um, if I can get it flat I don't know I didn't realize it was not gonna be flat it's kind of springy if I can get it flat put a board on there it's gonna have less surface area to suck the heat away than the big metal bars that um, the toaster oven has. Plus I don't like the fact that it's you know all floppy and clanky around and I want something a little more sturdier. It's pretty cool. Let's put that over there. See if it messes up the camera. Let's see if the camera can see it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Go ahead and recalibrate my uh, camera. All right, next, do this box here. Oh, right in the call. Oh, cool. I'm waiting for this. This is a small TFT. I think I already have this size. Hmm. Uh, I think. No. Well, it must be a little different display. Yeah, this is an IPS. This must be a TFT. So SPI 1.44 inch. This must be an ILI 9341. This is a uh, ST7789. So same kind of same size, different display. That's cool. So it's a nice color display that's not too big. It's pretty cool. This should be a smaller version of, um, oh, this is screwed in. Smaller version of these displays. Should be compatible. Same drivers. All right. Mm -hmm. Alright, next we have Carbon Brush. 
what I do with my razor blade. Alright, I bought a pack of carbon brushes. Um, I forget what I bought these for. Oh, I remember. Um, I was looking at making my own thermal couples, and you can do it with uh, um, voltage welding, uh, electrical welding. And uh, somebody had a demo on it, and they said to use carbon brushes as the um, one of the electrodes, so that um, so that it doesn't. Um, I guess so it doesn't degrade or contribute any metal to the um, to the thermocouple when you weld it. It also can handle a higher temperature. I think that uh, and the carbon prevents the uh, oxid oxidation when you when you do it. I think. So I thought I'd try that out. You use this as the anode or whatever, um, and then you power the thermal couple wires and you twist them together and then you just bzzz, and you pump uh, I don't know what how many amps through there but and it should should weld these are just carbon brushes for motors I just bought a whole bag of them they only come in like a whole bag plus who knows that might be a common size maybe I can use it for something <laughs> one day I'll need a brush I don't think many motors nowadays and tools are brush. This says 8.12 centimeter universal. I hope this isn't something fragile because I just dropped it on the floor. Seems to be three pieces of something. I think these are plastic plates I bought. Oh no, these are circuit boards. Cool. So yeah, not too fragile. Maybe I need to crack one. I cracked it when I dropped it. Yeah, I probably broke. Look, I broke the uh, corners off. Shit, that sucks. All of them hit the corner and cracked all the corners off. That's fine. I only bought these to put in my toaster oven as a base for reflowing because I don't have a board that's big, and I like to use PCB material so that's got the same temperature coefficient as a real PCB. So when you put the thermocouple on there, you get an accurate reading of heat transfer. Uh, also, these will indicate um, if your temperature is going too high, uh, these will burn. And um, you'll slowly see that after, you know, after 5, 10 reflows, these will start to discolor. And then you know your temperature is a little, a little too hot. Um, but either way, they're going to burn eventually. So I just bought some of these cheap, big ones. And you don't want copper clad because you don't want a whole copper coating or else your uh, any through hole uh, stuff will, will stick to it. You know, if you use that side, the solder will go through the, any solder paste in a USB jack or whatever will go through and stick on there. So those are for that. Um, solid rosin paste. I bought some rosin, hard rosin flux, um, so I thought I'd try, try a different kind to see if it's all pretty much the same, see if it smells the same. This is basically solid, pure rosin, or at least it should be. And uh, you can make your own solder flux by um, just dissolving some rosin in uh, IPA or uh, something even more pure um, like ethanol or something but IPA is probably safer you know it does have that one percent of water or whatever is in there so you can probably use 70 percent but if you can get the 90 90 something percent uh, isopropanol and then dissolve that in there some people use vodka or ethanol or I guess I could use some moonshine. 
um, to leave less uh, haze on your board. So I thought I'd try with that out. Just see about making your own flux. You can control exactly what you want. If you need to make a cream, there's something you could put in there, I believe, to make it um, creamy. Uh, I think you can put borax for some some stuff. And there's this different kind of um, there's a different couple different formulations that have been um, posted, some old patents and stuff. Oh, look, it just cracked. Look, shattered. The, oh, shattered the whole thing. I wonder what temperature they melt that at. All right, next. Next up is indicator lights. All right, so these are those like big industrial indicator lights. I don't know if they're waterproof or not, but I was looking for an indicator light. These are probably have an LED, uh, a lamp in them. They have a resistor in there. I don't know how you take these apart. There we go. So I was figuring they just come apart. They got a fairly bright LED encapsulated chip in there, and it seems to be waterproof. It's really well enclosed, and this seems to have a, a rubber ring on it. This side doesn't, but I'm sure you could put something in there, an O-ring of some sort. But I thought I could replace this with a RGB and have like a, that's why I got white, so I could have like a RGB indicator, a large indicator. Um, and you can put symbols in there. So these are really cool and they're really, they're fairly cheap. I think those are just soldered right on the posts. Five volt. So it's already got a resist two resistors in there, it looks like. Man, it's weird that they just use a circuit board. It looks like there's like wire bond points in there. That's interesting. It must be where the resistors just solder in and then the the pins solder in too. I don't know. That's kind of a weird construction. I don't know how you get that uh, out of there. I don't know if I could take that out of there. Or if this comes off. Yeah, it looks like there's just soldered on there. Hmm. Maybe if I unscrew these and pull these out, cut the resistors and I could pull that out. I'll uh, make a video on that if I do that. Just go in anyway. One X X one X two. Huh. Let's uh maybe I'll hook this up at the end of the video and we'll take a look at what it looks like. Just as is. Cool, I got two of them. Put that. All right, next. This is heavy. Um doesn't say. Doesn't say. It's a big box. It's awfully heavy. It's like a deck of cards or something. <laughs> oh, okay. This is, wow, this is nice for the price I paid. This is a air solenoid. Pneumatic solenoid. I'll have to get some taps for these. It's a five-way. Twelve volt. Solenoid. Oh, how come they didn't put the diagram on there? Oh, come on, guys. Either way, it ports from one to the other. And when it switches over, it opens one of these two ports open and these and these swap. So I should be able to use this to replace the two solenoids on my 
air thing I was working on. I have these two solenoids. If I need something more powerful, I'm going to try this out. This is a more industrial capable and a more more volume airflow. These are only like a th three millimeter holes. Well, those are really small. Those are maybe two millimeter. So that's the problem I'm having is these 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 holes in these things are really small. They work, but if I want something a little stronger, this might be a little better. So I'm gonna test that out. See how much stuff you need to get it working. Put some quick quick disconnects or barbs in here. And uh, try this out. I think this will also allow me to switch in a third um, airline that would. No, I probably still need another solenoid to provide the. But I might be able to use this one and another one to turn on a positive air to blow. I'll have to look at the diagram again for this. That's just like a no name. Cheapest one on eBay I could find. It's fairly nice. That's pneumatic air. I'm gonna put that back in the box. That's a, that's a pneumatic air solenoid. And, uh, let's go ahead and try to test, test one of these out. bright let's see if it's um it's like pulling three milliamps and it's barely um you could barely see it this is five volts though and wait well, that's weird it lights up either way it must be wired maybe those are diodes Huh, not very bright at all. Five volts, so I'm pulling, maybe it's really 12 volts. I'll have to look at these resistors in here and see because um, that's, um, you can barely see that. Hmm, interesting. Not very bright at all. I'll have to measure this and see if that's um, mislabeled. Yeah, somehow it works both ways. So it looks like they have two resistors. It must have um, so dual. Maybe it's dual, dual LED, dual, dual color LED. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know how that works. So it works with DC or AC, it looks like, maybe. Seems like it could definitely go brighter. Could probably pull the, vol uh, the voltage up to 12 volts. My guess. I'll test that later. Make sure I don't blow it out. Yeah, because uh, three milliamps is not a uh, not a lot. Let's try it. Let's try it going up to twelve. We'll bring the um, we'll go to twelve volts. We'll drop the current limit down to twenty milliamps. How about that? see what that does that's more like it 17 milliamps yeah so that's I don't know why it says 5 volts that's that can't be right I'm gonna guess this will go up to 30 
do 30 milliamps at 12 volts. 38 milliamps. Oh, I didn't turn it on. Could be a voltage divider. Yeah, that's more like it. 35 milliamps, 12 volts. It's not too bad. See that in daylight, probably. Well, not daylight, but, you know, a lit room. Cool. Yeah, I don't know what that what they're thinking. 5 volts AC, maybe? I don't know. All right, that's it for today. Till next time.